Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be talking about split size. We're not gonna be talking about overlap, we're not gonna be talking about line interval or LPI or anything, just split size. This video is applicable for people running Galvo style lasers, whether it be a fiber laser or a um, Galvo CO2 laser. Um, I've seen this asked a whole bunch. People are saying that their rotary, you know, like it takes them forever to do cups. Um, split size is crucial when it comes to that stuff. So let's get into it. First thing we want to do is we want to talk about what split size is. So on a Galvo laser, it's a little bit different than a gantry laser. The Galvo laser, your beam can actually move to different spots. Whereas on your gantry laser, your, um, laser can only laser on the spot of the cup that's underneath it. Right? So... Um, basically what split size is, is how many times or the distance that it's going to turn. Whereas like on a gantry machine, the cup is always turning, right? So on a Galvo style machine with a split size, it's going to rotate laser. All it needs to laser rotate again, laser. All it needs to laser rotate again and do that until it's finished. The larger your split size, the faster your job is going to run. Um, the, the thing about it is, is you need to find a balance between quality and speed because the larger your split size, the lower quality you're going to have. I'll show you how to test it and find your best and ideal split size. Um, but we're going to kind of cover everything in that video and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So what I want you guys to pay attention to right here is how often this chuck spins. Don't pay attention to anything else except for it spins. It hasn't moved yet. Now my speed turned way down. So you guys should be able to see it. See it just moved there. So that was one split size. This is a 10 millimeter split size. So it's going to laser everything into 10 in 10 millimeters and then it's going to rotate. We'll watch for it again. Coming up on another 10 millimeters. And then it rotated again. So it's going to rotate every 10 millimeters. And it's going to do everything within that 10 millimeters all the way down the cup. And then it's going to spin. This is 20 millimeter split size. It's going to run 20 millimeters, which should basically be this distance. And then it's going to rotate. gonna run another 20 millimeters worth of worth of graphic and then it's gonna rotate again one of the things one of the things to note um, is because we use this diameter of the cup when we run down here it's gonna cause even more of an issue um, with the larger split size because it's gonna overlap um, because this diameter is smaller right notice that that doesn't look that horrible and that looks completely horrible because it's overlapped because of the smaller diameter essentially what it has to do is find where it started before but with the smaller diameter here it's going to overlap you'll notice it when it does the duck on this part see how it starts almost at the tip of the beak right there watch it's going to cover the lines it's already done see it Whereas up here, it's not that horrible. You can actually still kind of tell it's a duck where that one, like the lines aren't even connected. Okay, so here's the deal with split size. You have to find that balance of speed and quality. First thing we're gonna do is cover speed. Um, I ran this test cup, but I just want you guys to pay attention to these four boxes right here. These are 50 millimeter boxes. 
I ran these with the, these split sizes and these were the times, That's right? Um, this may not be that big of a deal for something like this, but on a logo, um, these seconds add up, especially on a full wrap. So you'll see right here at a one millimeter split size, we had a time of 24.7 seconds for a 50 millimeter by 10 millimeter box. Uh, the change isn't that drastic when you get over to five millimeters. You got 23.1 seconds for the for the 10 by, by 50 box. Then we drop two seconds using a 10 millimeter split. Um, we go 21.02 seconds. And then on a 20 millimeter split, um, we got 19.7 seconds. This is also with the travel of the cup too. So um, this cup actually rotated to the spot that it needed to be at. So these times are also off by a little bit um, because of the travel. This had a longer time and it had to travel the least. This had the farthest travel and the time was the quickest. Before we move on, I do want to mention the, um, the speed and quality balance. You'll see right here, we have a nice crisp top line you'll see right here it gets a little chattery here it gets a, even a little bit more chattery and here even more less chatter but you can see how off that is from the top going back to over here how smooth it is so when you're looking for your split size, the one that works for you, you want to find that balance of speed and quality, right? So um, let's start with the worst one. So I started, I ran all these ducks and all these boxes um, to give you guys an idea, just a pretty drastic way of uh, being able to tell what it does, right? So like I mentioned previously, the um, at a 20 millimeter split size, it's going to laser everything in 20 millimeters, then it's gonna rotate and then continue. Notice how these lines don't connect. This is overlapped. If we come down here, because this isn't the diameter we use, like I had mentioned, we use this diameter. It's even worse, right? Look at the overlap right there. That's probably about eight millimeters. You know, the duck is in the box. If we come up to the 10, it's, not as drastic on the overlap. The lines are still not connecting here and here. The text looks horrible. If you come down here, the one is actually on top of the zero. That looks like a wonky duck. You can see how much it overlapped um, in multiple spots because it only had those 10 millimeter moves as opposed to the 20. So there's gonna be more of those. Moving on to the five millimeter, um, still, you know, we're not, we're kind of closer to a location. The lines aren't, aren't meeting yet. We have tons of overlap. The text looks like garbage. You come up here. It looks a lot better because we use this diameter. Remember? So on a larger logo, you might be, especially at the top of the cup or like a solid cup with no taper, you can get away with a larger split size. The two and a half up here looks okay. You have a little bit of chatter here. Um, it would depend on the logo that you're doing. Um, tons of chatter down here. You can see the ducks all, it almost looks like it's got feathers all the way around. You got this crazy zigzag. So we wouldn't want to use two and a half millimeters. We want to keep reducing and find a, a good spot. Uh, 1.25, still a lot of chat, like a lot of zigzaggy in here. Um, the duck looks a lot better than two and a half. Uh, but again, you know, and up here. It looks pretty smooth. You could actually do logos with this, like a big logo on the side. You could probably get them done really quick this way. The duck looks good. Moving to 0.75. Duck looks really good. This looks pretty good. You have a little bit of wobble in here. Um, not too bad. The lines look good. All the perimeter borders look good. All that coming here. Uh, down the bottom, it almost looks exactly about the same. So you could get away with, you could probably get away with that. The duck looks clean. Everything's where it should be. Um, so what I did when I calibrated mine is I did this just, just like this. I went 125 to 75. Then I went to 0.5 and I found that balance. I found where I was like, 
okay, this looks good. This looks good. Um, let me bump it up a little bit more. See if the quality is the same or, or worse. If it's worse, go back down and you'll find your number for, for what your split size is. Now, keep in mind, the, the smaller this number gets, the longer it's going to take. The larger it gets, the, um, the, shorter, the shorter it's going to be. Also worth mentioning, larger diameters, um, you are going to want to reduce your split size. If you do a like a dog bowl, I ran it. I did a dog bowl and I ran into a ton of chatter, even with a smaller split size. So you want to kind of um, find that balance too. Don't think that you know because you have it for forty ounce tumblers, it's going to work on a larger diameter object. Um, just worth mentioning um, if you're wondering why you're getting chatter or or skipping lines or something on like something as big as like an eight inch dog bowl. Last thing. Um, if you're not doing full wraps, you can get away with a larger split size. Um, if you're doing a, a 40 ounce tumbler, obviously like the results up here are going to be different than here. Like I had mentioned, you know, your, your five just doesn't look horrible right here, but it looks absolutely horrible right here on a low detail logo. You could probably crank these out at a, with a five millimeter split size and, uh, it's a license to print money, you know, um, but on something that, you know, you have text up here and down here or a pattern here and here, um, you're going to want a smaller split size to account for um, the smaller diameter here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If I didn't cover anything, um, drop your questions in the comments. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I hope I was able to clarify what split size does for you and speed up your cup making process a little bit. Um, thanks for watching as always and um, laser on.